I'm going to I'm going to introduce uh, the, a, another uh, concept here, another part of our, our conversation, and that's uh, something that can result from IND mistakes and omissions. And we'll, we'll dovetail back into the IND conversation uh, as we go. Uh, but I want to introduce the concept of the clinical hold so that we can address that. Uh, there's been a ton of discussion on the life sciences or in and about the life sciences media that is about the FDA sort of ratcheting, ratcheting up clinical hold activity. Um, and it, if you look at the numbers they have, uh, in each of the five years, 2017 through 2021, the agency halted clinical activity an average of 664 times. So that's 664 uh, per year on average, 2017 through 21. That's up from 557 on average in each year, 2001 to 2016. So it's a measurable and significant increase. And personally, I mean, I, I guess I suspect there's plenty of uh, I, there, there's plenty of uh, speculation, right, around around why that is. I suspect uh, a lot of the increase in that activity is due to, one, around that time frame, we saw a giant influx in pandemic-related uh, INDs. But there's also been a lot of progress on the ATMP front and cell and gene therapies. Um, so that's probably contributing to the groundswell as well. Um, but let's back up a minute and sort of define that challenge. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to throw this question out, uh, Helen, to you. Since you're on my screen, we'll start with you, if that's okay. Uh, tell us, w w define the clinical hold. Uh, w what is a clinical hold? Um, and, and I know that there are multiple sort of levels or forms mm -hmm. of clinical hold that can come, come on the continuum. So give us an overview, and, and, uh, and, and, and then maybe we can get into some of the common causes. Sure. There's, <clears throat> there's two types of clinical holds. It's either a complete clinical hold or a partial clinical hold. Um, for an initial IND, it's probably more on the line of you can't initiate your clinical studies uh, because there's concerns either regarding the quality side of things or the um, CMC side of things. And then there's a partial clinical hold, which means it's probably more relevant if you have an IND that's been up and running and you have several studies ongoing where it may be limited to one clinical study, whereas the other clinical studies may proceed. So it's usually tied to FDA's concerns regarding either the quality aspect of your IND, um, the animal studies that you've conducted, or aspects of you know, the clinical trial that they're not comfortable with in terms of what you've laid out for not only enrolling but monitoring of patients. And so it's really important early on when you get a, a clinical hold to understand the nuances between those two. Um, mm -hmm. It's there's a specific uh, regulation, I think it's subpart 3112, which lays out um, certain criteria for clinical holds in different phases of clinical trials. Um, and they can be um, really, they can impact timelines, resources, and whatnot to an IND. So for example, if an FDA during the 30, after the, during the 30 day review of an IND, FDA will likely if it's not too egregious, try to work with the company to address the clinical hold. Unless there is something that they feel can't be addressed during that time, then they'll place that IND on clinical hold, which means you can't initiate the study until you've addressed their concerns. And that could either be maybe additional manufacturing process steps, it could be additional animal studies, and that could significantly delay the time to which you actually start um, evaluating your product in clinical trials. Yeah. Dr. Drago, anything to add there? I've, uh, I've, I've plowed through a couple of questions there and haven't, uh, haven't had to jump in. Absolutely. So let me start by just uh, providing the definition from the uh, Code of Federal Regulation of clinical hold in general. Uh, it's defined as an order issued by FDA to a sponsor to either delay a proposed clinical trial or suspend one that is ongoing, like Helen was mentioning, the difference between full and partial. But what I found interesting in your question is uh, trying to get something about what are the most common deficiencies. Mm -hmm. And in terms of it, there are a couple of really insightful papers uh, that have been published by colleagues working at the FDA. And I wanted to flag in particular two for our audience. One is a paper from Larissa Lapteva and co-authors uh, that came out in the Journal of Investigative Medicine in 2016, 
where the authors found out that the most common deficiencies leading to clinical holds were product quality issues, chemistry manufacturing and control issues, followed by clinical and then toxicology concerns. Also, interestingly, uh, Lapteva and co-authors found that there were no significant differences in rates and reasons for clinical holds between INDs for rare or common disease indications. Mm. Another interesting paper, I believe, uh, is the one from uh, Manning. Uh, it appeared in Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology in 2020, and uh, it's an FDA analysis on clinical hold de deficiencies affecting INDs for oncology products. That's an interesting point. I'd, I'd like to see that. It's an interesting point about that, the, the, the note that you made around there not being significant differences in, in clinical hold rationale between uh, rare and, and, and common therapeutic products. That's, that's super interesting. Uh, that's what uh, Lapteva uh, found out, and I believe the paper from Manning, uh, the, the findings are really comparable. So, yeah. Uh, John, ben, John Ben just asked if we, if we could share these papers. We, we don't have those on hand as a resource. Uh, there are some resources uh, available uh, in, in your interface. Those papers are not, but, but uh, Daniela, uh, remind us again where we, can, where, where we might be able to find those. Sure. The one from uh, Lapteva appeared in the Journal of Investigative Medicine in 2016, and the title is Investigational New Drug Applications, a one-year pilot study on rates and reasons for clinical holds. And the one from Manning uh, uh, appeared in Regulatory Toxicology and Pharmacology in 2020, and the exact uh, title is an FDA analysis of clinical hold deficiencies affecting uh, investigational new drug applications for oncology products.